Hello everybody, uh, welcome to another weekly up update from an Inkscape developer. Uh, my name is Martin. Uh, firstly, I want to give a big shout out to all of my Patreon supporters. Thank you all so much for helping me to develop in Inkscape. Um, this week has actually been uh, slow um, because I've been uh, dragged away to do uh, other client work. I have been uh, very slowly importing tuberculosis genetic data and it's taking forever so uh, apologies the, the updates this week are going to be a bit light but uh, it gives me an opportunity to talk about a big change that's happened this week in the Inkscape uh, code base and that is the the Google Summer of Code project for new panels has land landed now if you're aware Inkscape uses these side panels that can be dragged out and um, the the widget that was being used in order to do, do that uh, had been deprecated and it caused a lot of problems. Um, it was also very inconsistent and uh, people just kind of learned to live with them, um, but they do, they do cause a lot of issues. So this project was to basically replace those uh, during the summertime. And the project got most of the way to being complete um, before it kind of stalled out on the last sort of like polishing up and getting it in. And the, the confidence of the developer is key here because, you know, no, no code is per perfect, but different developers have different um, levels of confidence about what quality of code that they'll, they'll commit. Um, the problem is, is that if you wait too long, um, your code starts to bit rot. That is, it, it becomes too different and divergent from the, the mainline trunk branch. So it takes more work to maintain this, this pseudo fork, um, while you are trying to fix up problems. So, right, you're creating a job for yourself as you wait. Um, so what we just decided to do as developers is that we, we kind of pitched in together. I think Mark led the way on this to, to basically breach it directly into uh, the pro project so we could get it committed in. We know it's not per perfect yet. We know there's going to be some issues. Um, so if you're able to test it, this is a great opportunity to test it. Um, but it's but it's looking really good and, and it, it satisfies the first re requirement for ch changes this big, which is does it make Inkscape better? And uh, I definitely think that uh, these new panels are better than the ones that we had um in 1.0. Um, this did, however, cause an issue because the this code was very large and so it touched a lot of files. So if you remember the um, uh, the objects di di dialog, the new the new design for the objects dialog, that um, got damaged effectively by the by the com commit because it did, it diverged, and so I had to spend some time. Um, shuffling it back in so that the, the, the new panels code and the new objects in the dialog code, uh, could basically be merged together. Uh, the, the Thomas, who I mentioned last week and the previous week before that, uh, who wants to get the new objects in the dialog in for 1.1, 1, 1. 1, has done excellent work. He, he, he pushed all of his commits, uh, yesterday. It's looking really good from the developer meeting that we had. Uh, we think that it, it satisfies the first requirement, which is does, does this work better than the previous version of the objects in the dialog? And, um, we think yes, but probably just about, um, because I've removed some fun functionality. So there's some regression. And we think that the rest of it can probably be ha handled by bug fi fixes, which is what, what what happens when you when you hit freeze, right? You freeze and then you fix bugs until until the release. Um, it's mostly just to stop the developers going off, of go, going a bit wild. Um, I did continue with the start screen improvements, um, but a big shout out to Javier, who basically fixed the the theming. So when you select the, the right theme. It now correctly changes the theme in the start panel itself with the little indicator icons. So you can, you won't get a perfect sense of what it looks like, but at least you'll get a sense of what it looks like. Um, 
I also added some ca canvas controls because people wanted to be able to select the default for what, uh, whether they wanted a dark canvas or they wanted a checkerboard background and stuff, stuff like that. So I've added those op options in and what, what they'll basically do is just override the, the temp, the default temp template. So when you create a new d document, it'll have that as the, as the, the background color. Um, the, it doesn't actually change the background color. Um, it, it's, it, it's always transparent. Um, but it does change the way it looks so that you're not blinded by a massive white. Um, there was a, there was a new addition, the, the, her, her line support, which was added. Uh, I was involved basically just, uh, changing the user experience. So instead of it being a button, it's now in the drop down for the, for, for the units. This is apparently an important feature for people who do cutting work and a couple of other, um, types of, of workflows where you need to set not a not an actual unit but you need to set a special value called her line on widths um, so th that's looking nice um, I added so I was I was actually paid um, and you know if you're rich or a business or, or, or whatever you can actually come direct, directly to to me and can't contract me to add stuff to In Inkscape for you so I was paid to uh, add a select mode. Um, the idea here is that when you select a bunch of objects with the rubber band and you, you create a box around them and select them, the default right, right now is to only select things that are inside that box. Um, but the client wanted so that the, anything that was touching that box, so things that were overlapping outside of that box, but in, you know, some part of it was inside, those would also be selected. Um, and so this is what the feature does. It, it, it basically selects everything touching that box. Um, there's a there's a toggle button and there's also a healthy discussion inside the merge request about uh, how we should do it because the select tool needs a bit of love as well, but we'll see. Um, so thank you very, very, very much to my client for paying me to be able to do that work. Um, it's very good when we have so, sort of like these, these investments that can come in, makes it easier and, and more confidently that we can uh, add things to Inkscape. Um, I also wanted a, a big shout out. You'll probably have no noticed at the beginning of this video, I have some new graphics. Big shout out to Chris Rod Rogers for the new artwork. Uh, I know some of the work that he did was because I bartered with him for the JPEG export, but uh, I, th I think that he, he went above and beyond um, as, a, as a birthday gift. So thank you very, very much, Chris. Um, and I, I think that that probably wraps it up for, for now. If you have any co comments about the the panel's work, or you, if you want a link to be able to try that that stuff, uh, let us know. Um, if you'd like to support my work on Inkscape, please do um, support me on Patreon uh, or hire me. Uh, e either way, um, but but like your support really does mean that I can work on Inkscape for more of my time, and I don't have to do other work. Um, so. Um, have a very good week and I will see everybody uh, next time.